Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with our drive-by-wire throttle control in our Haltech ESP software. So we're going to be finding that most modern engines now have a drive-by-wire throttle system fitted to them. So we're going to be finding we have an accelerator pedal position that's going to be in the vehicle. That's actually going to be your gas pedal. It has two throttle position sensors built in to tell the ECU your throttle movement. So when we go 50% throttle, it knows that it's sending 50% throttle request. Now we're also going to have our drive-by-wire throttle body. It's going to have two throttle position sensors located inside of it. That's going to be telling the ECU how much the throttle plate is moving. So we're going to be finding there's a disconnect, there's no throttle cable in this situation. We're going to be electronically controlling that throttle body. Now we're also going to be having the two control wires. They're going to be a plus and a minus. That's going to go and increase the plate or decrease the plate movement. So depending on what we're programming, if we're a request for throttle angle in our throttle angle control table, it's going to be sending that out and trying to control things. We're going to be finding this happens in a proportional integral derivative closed loop state. Sounds like it's really complicated, but to be honest with you, Haltech makes it pretty simple in their software. Now there's going to be some very specific things that we need to be aware of, such as our idle control. I'm going to be pointing out so that you can understand what you're going to be working with in the idle control side of things so that you can implement the drive-by-wire successfully. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be talking about working with our drive-by-wire control in our Haltech software. We're going to be finding it's really simple to go in and tune with drive-by-wire, but there's going to be some things that we need to know that aren't so obvious when you're looking at setting up the control in the software. So the first thing we need to do is jump up into our setup here. Let's jump into functions, and we're going to be adding our drive-by-wire to our add remove functions list here. So let's jump in at the bottom. We're we'll going to be typing in drive by wire, and then you're going to be finding that it populates right here. So we're going to turn this on. Then we're going to be finding that we have our inputs here that we have to configure. We can find we're an error here that we haven't configured these inputs. Now, a drive by wire setup is going to have two throttle position sensors on the throttle body. We can see TPS1, TPS2. We also can see that we have our APP or the accelerator pedal position. That's going to be inside the car in your cabin. You're going to be finding that you have two sensors on that accelerator pedal position. So the way the drive-by drive wire is going to work, it's going to have a redundancy. It's going to have a sensor that's going to go high and a sensor that's going to go low. So for any given change in operation, it's going to be comparing to each other and these different sensor inputs. Now, just as we have four sensor inputs, we're going to have two sensor outputs that are going to be controlling the drive-by wire to command the throttle to open and the throttle to close. So we're going to be finding these on pin B25 and B26. These are going to be hard-coded in the Haltech, so we're not able to change these. Now, we're only going to have drive-by-wire control on an Elite 1500 or 2500. If you have an Elite 550, 750, 1000, or 2000, we're going to lack this drive-by-wire control, so you have to upgrade to a different Elite box in order to use drive-by-wire. So looking here at our inputs, we have to configure some things. So we're going to jump under the connections. I'm going to go here and just assign the various connections I have available here. We're going to be finding I have AVI inputs available. I'm just going to select these going one by one here. 